What is up YouTube? All right guys, so I'm going to show you the easiest way to calculate your own macros for bulking or for cutting. All you need is a web browser and the ability to get on the internet. So um, that's it, no complex equations, no nothing. This will give you a really good idea of where your macro you know, baselines are at, how you can adjust up and down for bulking and slash or cutting, and yeah, give you a good idea of where to start. So I probably get this question more than any other fitness question, and um, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to do that, all right? So uh, stay tuned. First thing you're gonna wanna do is calculate your TDEE. What that is is your total daily energy expenditure. Now, to put it into um, layman's terms for that, that is basically the amount of calories it requires you personally daily for you to stay the exact same weight. So if you're sedentary or if you work a construction job, you know, age, weight, height, they all play a key role in this. And figuring that out is where you want to start at. So I am on a website called IIFYM.com. So we're here, and as you can see, there's some uh, there's some good stuff on here. They have some articles you can read and stuff. Um, anyways, that's not what we're here for. We're here for one tool, the IIFYM calculator. So we're gonna go to this calculator and fill out some important information. So let's just do me, for example. So I'm a man, I hope, I hope I'm a man. <laughs> I just turned 26, so we'll put that here. I am five foot 10 with the right tennis shoes on. Currently now I weigh 175 roughly. We're gonna go on the total body weight formula equation because the lean mass formula, I don't necessarily know my, uh, I don't necessarily know my body fat percentage perfectly right now. So if you can get that tested, that makes us a little more accurate, um, but total body weight formula will work. It'll give us a good ballpark. So how would I describe my normal daily activities? Okay, so I am spending most of the day sitting. So I'm gonna choose this. Unless you are, you know, on your feet quite a bit or you're doing strenuous activity, you should just stick in the sedentary, sedentary uh, zone there. Okay, and days per week exercising. We're just gonna say, I do exercise seven days a week, dang near, but we're gonna put six because I think that, uh, I'm gonna start incorporating in more rest days because I've been going really hard. So we'll do six. I do 40 minutes of cardio a day, so let's say um, that probably puts me, and I work out for about an hour, so it's going to be about 100 minutes a day. Okay, so that puts my total daily energy, okay, now you can choose how intense your exercise is, um, unless you're running like, unless you are running, let's say like maybe like a CrossFit style workout or you're doing high intensity interval training, you're really kicking kicking yourself in the ass, um, light is probably going to work for you. That's what I usually put. I work my butt off in the gym and I am breathing heavy, but I don't like to, to say, you know, cause for if you're with your weight training, you're probably not exhausting yourself to a real crazy extent. And the type of cardio that I like to do, this low intensity, steady state, um, it's not really killing me either. So I just put light. I feel like that keeps this a little more accurate. So that puts my total daily energy expenditure at 2,478 calories. So basically what that means is that if I eat 2,478 calories, that is going to keep me relatively the exact same weight as long as my activity and everything else stays the same. So I keep doing the same workouts for the same you know minutes every day, blah, blah, blah. So 2478, that's my total daily energy expenditure. This can vary. Um, females is typically gonna be a lot lower, males gonna be higher. And depending on your, your day job and depending on how many days you're working out and for how long, this also jumps up and down. So 2478 is where we are gonna be at for my total daily energy expenditure. Now, what we have to do next is take this information. Now, you used to be able to get on here and they'd kind of give you some, uh, they break the macros down for you, but now they want you to pay for it. And uh, we're about making this free. So what we're gonna do is open up a new tab and go to another website I love, macronutrientcalculator.com. So what's gonna happen here with this website is you get some different uh, high carb, moderate zone diet, low carb. I don't necessarily follow any of those presets. What we're gonna do is, so total daily energy expenditure 2478, we're gonna plug that in here. So you can click calculate and then you can play with these percentages here and it will show you you know how many grams and you can see the uh, percentage down there, you know, kind of lets you play with your macros to see exactly, you know, adding up to the calories you have. Because as you should all know, every gram of fat equals nine calories, every gram of protein equals four calories, every gram of carbohydrates equals four calories. So all of those add up to your overall calories. So now that we kind of see how this works, what I'm going to show you is for cutting first off. So the type of deficit you run when you're cutting, caloric deficit, 
is going to ultimately depend personally on how hard and how fast you want to diet. The bigger deficit you take, the more risk you have of losing muscle and not just fat while you're cutting. The smaller deficit you take typically uh, lends to more fat loss and more muscle retention. So what we're going to do here, typically what I advise for people, um, unless if you're already pretty lean, a 300 to 500 calorie deficit is going to be perfect. Um, if you have a lot of extra body fat that you are currently holding on to, I suggest usually between, you know, a, you can go a little higher with your deficit. So, you know, six, 700 deficit. I usually don't recommend men go below 1500 calories a day. Cause that's kind of the danger zone. Um, women typically is around, you know, no less than 800 typically. Um, there's some rare cases where you might need to go lower than this to get lean enough for like a contest or show or whatever. But, um, for the most part, that general rule of thumb is pretty good. Um, so for me, let's say right now I'm cutting. So I could put my, we'll subtract 500. We'll go, you know, we'll err on the safer side of things. 1,978 calories. So we're gonna calculate that. Boom, so this gives me some new macros. Now, you can adjust these sliders and it's gonna tell you exactly, exactly, you know, what the macros you want leading up to the calories. So I typically recommend um, body weight times 0.4 for fat intake, da da da. Um, but what I found my sweet spot is, is around 55 grams of fat. So we're gonna keep that there. And we want protein to at least be one gram per pound of body weight. That's gonna ensure we hold on to muscle. I like to go a little more than that, maybe like 1.2 or 1.3, because I feel that when I am dieting, that really helps me. I can kind of crank my deficit up a little bit and that helps me hold on to as much muscle mass as possible. So we'll go in here. Let me take, my protein right now is typically around 232 grams a day. So we're gonna back carbs up until we hit that 100% mark. And voila, so here we go. At 1,978 calories, that gives me a 500 calorie deficit. 500 calories times seven days a week adds up to 3,500 calories, which is the exact amount of calories that's in one pound. So this has me set up to lose one pound of body fat per week if I follow this exact macronutrient guideline. So that's the my fitness power that comes into play, weighing your food, all that stuff. Um, but basically, if I followed these, I would lose one pound a week. Now you can get a little crazier with it if you wanna lose more weight. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't recommend men going below 1,500. But, you know, I could take this down to, let's say, 1678, make my deficit a little more, and then boom, we'll pick our fats back up to 55, because you want to keep in mind that your fat, you want to keep it, at least for men, above, above 50 grams, usually, per my recommendation, just because fat, dietary fat is responsible for so many things, responsible for testosterone production, it's responsible for just overall hormone production all around, like your leptin hormone, which is causing you to burn fat, like you have to have fat for so many bodily processes, so you gotta get that in there, I always recommend at least 50, I go a little bit above that just to be uh, on the safe side, so we'll see, 56 here, up our protein to about 227, back carbs down. Bingo. So this is a little closer to what my low carb days are looking like now that I'm carb cycling. This is what my macros are more like on those low carb days. Uh, but yeah, you can play with this and figure it out. Now, let's go back to baseline. Was it 1978, I believe? Let's look. Okay. 1978 was, oh, I'm sorry, 2478 was my total daily energy expenditure. So we will reset that now bulking macros. If you want to calculate your bulking macros, you take that exact same total daily energy expenditure or TDEE. And then what you want to do is now your bulk, you can, your bulk can be as aggressive as you want it to be. Now, the higher over, you know, I usually recommend if you want to lean bulk, you're going to go between 300 and 500 calorie weekly surplus. That'll ensure you have the adequate nutrients to put on good muscle and you're not really spilling over and putting on too much fat. Um, my last bulk though was a little crazy and I did over 4,000 calories a day. Put on some good size, but put on a lot of fat too. It took me a while to burn it off. If you've been following me for a while, you have kind of seen my transformation and seen what exactly all uh, took place during this. But um, if you haven't, it is what it is. So um, let's say, let's go on the higher side of the lean bulk, 29.78, boom. So here we can play around a little bit. We're not as worried about body composition and it's not necessarily having really high protein isn't necessary as much either just based on the fact that we're gonna have enough nutrients, our body's not gonna go to our muscle ever for energy. So we will take this protein. Now I like to stick a little closer to one gram per pound of body weight on a bulk 
So let's say, you know, but then you gotta keep in mind, so you're gonna gain weight on a bulk. Um, so right now I'm 175. If I switch to bulking, I'd probably rebound weight pretty quickly just because my body, uh, my body would want all the nutrients I've been lacking for a while. I'd want that nutrition. So um, let's just go. I'm 175 now. We'll just set it at 186, just knowing that I'd probably rebound some water weight from the glycogen replenishment and stuff like that. Um, we'll keep fat around. You still don't want to take dietary fat too high. I usually don't recommend men go over 120 grams of dietary fat a day, even on a bulk, just because you want the majority of it to become from carbohydrates, as this is going to give you the greatest recovery, full muscle glycogen replenishment, all that good stuff. And, you know, dietary fat doesn't make you fat, but too much of it will certainly contribute. So we're going to keep fat around. We'll do 86 grams. 186. Okay, so the rest we fill in with carbohydrates. Now, this is where the fun happens. Watch those grams go up. Oh. All right, so if I was lean bulking, which I will start this here soon, I'm probably going to stay lean for a few more months and I'm going to start lean bulking. But here we go. Now, you can see here that 86 grams of fat, 186 grams of protein, and 365 grams of carbohydrates. Lord help me, if I had these macros right now, I would just go go nuts I would, I would love this but uh you know it ain't bulking season yet it's still summer so we are we are still hanging out in lean zone so yeah same principles apply with bulking except you're going the other way now this would be the the higher side of a lean bulk you know some people have different uh, strategies when it comes to bulking i do believe the lean bulk if you're trying to stay lean doing it this way is probably the safest method um you can still have like one cheat meal a week or so stay pretty on point you're not going to gain too much fat and in the event you do you can do a mini cut drop it off real quick um now if you want to put on as much size as possible in the shortest amount of time you want to increase your you want to increase your calories quite a bit so um depending on your body weight and stuff this this will vary depending on the individual and how much you can tolerate some people just don't have the appetites to eat 4,000 plus calories a day I do I could eat 10,000 a day probably because I'm a freaking monster when it comes to eating so let's take for instance so we have a 500 surplus let's just jump us up here let's do a thousand calorie surplus so that puts us at 3478 right calculate boom so that puts us here we'll take our fat back down and then we have a little more room for protein now. And then, bingo. So look at them macros. It would be around 81 grams of fat, 209 grams of protein, 478 grams of carbs. That is a ton of carbs. Your body has no choice but to grow when you're pumping this much nutrition into it. And let's go. My last diet was 4,200. Oh, 4,200, bingo. And now we have, okay, let's see. Where was my macros at last time? If I want to remember from my last bulk, it was somewhere around here. 107 grams fat, 231 grams protein, 578 grams carbs. Um, I put on some freaking size. I don't know if 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 you knew me in person, you've seen me before my bulk, during my bulk, and then now after my bulk. The muscle I put on was good quality muscle, but I had never eaten this much, you know, clean food. I'd never really tracked macros or done anything until I had bulked at 4,200. Um, did I put on a lot of fat? Yes, I did, especially in my love handle region, uh, low, lower belly, and I'm still fighting that fat actually day to day. But um, was it worth it? I think so. My cut took longer than it should have just based on the fact that uh, I did let myself gain so much body fat, but I think in the end it paid off because I put on a lot of quality muscle. So this is always an option for you. Just keep in mind that if you do it this way, you might be putting on a little too much fat. Uh, you know, And I'm one of those people like, I think that when you when you lift weights and do all this fitness stuff, you always want to look like you lift weights, if you know what I mean. Like, So getting too sloppy, I don't recommend for anybody, unless you just really don't care. If your overall goal is strength and your overall goal is to put on as much size as possible, or if you are a hard gainer, someone that you know has a really hard time putting on weight at all, then this is more you know the approach for you. But everybody's got varying levels of genetics, different body types, stuff like that, mesomorph, ectomorph, all that good stuff. So anyways, um, yeah, you figure your macros out and plug them into MyFitnessPal, and there you go. Guys, so that is how you calculate your macros the easiest way possible. So, you know, when I'm working with clients, keep in mind, I actually do some more comp a little more complex math equations and stuff, but I found that even when I run those, that online calculator gets pretty dang close to what I can come up with. So um, if you want an easy way to figure out where you're at, that is the way to do it. Now. 
keep in mind too, those calculators are not 100% accurate and you gotta, you gotta understand that this is all theoretical. So you may actually end up lying 100, 200 calories either direction on your total daily energy expenditure. So the true way to figure everything out is to kind of just play with it, mess with it, you know, experiment with your macros, experiment with your body and um, see exactly where you know, where your true total daily energy expenditure lies. And that also changes, you know, you can switch jobs, you can kind of, you can have a few weeks where you don't work out as much. There's a lot of things that affect that. So, but that'll give you a really good baseline on where to start if you're looking at calculating your own macros. Anyways, guys, uh, this was the first time I've done any sort of video like this. And boy, was it a hassle to get all this stuff set up, but worth it in the end, I think. So if you like this style of video, let me know. I can do more like this and I can kind of, you know, give you guys some some more lessons, so to say, on fitness, nutrition, all that. Um, I, I like these because I feel like we get to talk, we get to connect, you get to kind of just see me and my natural <laughs> habitat, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, hope you got some value once again. Um, make sure you like my video, hit that like button. That helps give me more exposure. You know, my videos are starting to actually get suggested onto other people's pages and stuff, which is really freaking cool. So um, hitting that like button helps me out a lot. And um, also too, be sure to comment below and let me know if you liked the video. Anyways, guys, I will talk to you later. Thank you so much for all your support as always and uh, have a good day, guys. See ya.